Hi, welcome to yet another episode of Refactor. This is Arnav from Scalar. And uh, today we will talk about recession proofing your tech career. Why this topic? It's because everywhere I'm going, like Scalar events, uh, classes at Scalar, on, on social media, people have been asking this question to me a lot. How can I recession proof my tech career? Um, I understand why people are asking that because just the last uh, few months, uh, the news that have come out from a lot of the uh, big tech companies, the fan companies, a lot of people want to join. Many of them are having hiring freezes. Uh, some of them have uh, laid off a lot of engineers. Facebook, for example, uh, a company which for I think 18 years had never done layoffs, uh, did lay off 11,000 of their employees. And needless to say, people are a little uh, scared of what the future holds for them, what uh, can they do uh, so that in their career, they are not affected by this. So we will break this down. The first thing that I would like to uh, say is that, um, and then we will cover this later on in this video, is that the recession proofing your career does not come from uh, picking a job or picking a company that will never lay you off. It comes from building your career in such a way that you are always valued. So job security comes from your skills. Job security does not come from the nature of the company you're working at. Okay, There were companies which people thought are never going to do layoffs, but even they are doing. Um, why are they doing? We'll start breaking down those reasons. So first of all, what is happening right now? Um, obviously, there are... Uh, some uh, macroeconomic reasons that we say. Macroeconomic reasons means that globally, financially, there are changes that are happening in the market. Russia has gone to war in Europe, which is means that gas prices have gone up in Europe, which has made you know very high inflation there, which means there's a lot less spending on uh, things like you know if your electricity or gas prices or, or your house rents go up, you're going to think that, okay, maybe I will not renew my Spotify subscription. Maybe I will not renew my uh, YouTube premium subscription uh, because... I'm spending a lot. This has been one of the reasons why uh, the growth of a lot of software companies has been reducing a bit. Uh, on the other hand, in the US, right after uh, COVID, there was a lot of uh, you know uh, money flowing around in the market because the Fed, what they call is Fed, the Fed is basically the Federal Reserve Bank, which is like uh, the RBI of uh, US. Uh, they had lowered the interest rates and people could spend a lot of money. Now they are raising the interest rates because too much money was getting spent, inflation was happening. So again, spending is getting reduced there. Again, that's another reason why uh, software companies are seeing um, less uh, you know, consumer growth. Ads have uh, gotten less, ads have gotten less, which means a lot of social media companies, search companies like Google, Facebook, these kind of companies uh, earn a lot of money from ads. So that's reducing. These have been some of the main reasons why the software in industry as a whole, um, which if you look at uh, 20 to 2022, these two years, uh, the companies were projecting that they will grow a lot because these two years, they grew a lot. In these two years, some of these companies grew by 2x, 3x, like they doubled or tripled their growth in terms of users or their revenue or the number of subscriptions. And that growth is not going to happen at 2x or 3x level anymore, which they are seeing right now. Uh, but they did hire a lot of people thinking that they have to build a lot of things if that 2x, 3x kind of growth continues till 2025. Now they're saying that, okay, maybe this growth is not going to continue. Maybe the growth is going to slow down. And if that's going to be happening, then we probably don't want to work on so many features. We don't want to build so many things. And maybe we don't need so many engineers or so they are sort of putting the brakes there. The other thing that's happening is that because of these uh, macroeconomic situations, um, the stock market has been collapsing in a lot of countries. Right here in India, uh, it's not a lot. If you look at most of the stocks uh, of, of some of the biggest companies here, they are not like down by 50% or 80% kind of a thing. But if you look at US, most of the stocks there are actually of tech companies there, some of the biggest companies. And their stocks are down. Some of them are uh, down by 70 to 80% since the last one year. If a stock of uh, stocks of a company are down, it becomes hard for that company to continue to spend a lot. And especially for many of these companies, one of the largest pieces of expenditure comes from paying the salaries of software engineers. So they might think that, okay, we might need to cut down on that expense. So these are the reasons why these things are happening. How does it affect the market? Let's understand that a bit as well. So obviously it means that if people who were experienced engineers at good tech companies who uh, have been let go of these companies of late and en masse, uh, maybe 100 to 200,000 very good quality engineers across a lot of these companies have been let go. The total layoff numbers might be a lot more, but then they might not all be software engineers. They would be spread across a lot of different roles. But even if you look at people who are software engineers, product managers, engineering managers, uh, right? 
designers in these roles as well. There might have been a lot of people who are out in the market now looking for the next job because wherever they were, those teams might have been shut down, those companies might have been shut down, so they're looking for jobs. And these people have already some years of experience, maybe at some very good tech companies, which makes them sort of the first choice to hire for companies which are still hiring right now. The second thing is that um, more than layoffs, what affects the job market is actually hiring freezes. Because if you look at the numbers of companies like Amazon or Microsoft or Google, these kind of companies, they hire tens of thousands of engineers every year, right? Their, their headcounts grow by 10,000, 20,000 every year. That's the size of the growth of these companies. Now, if a company like that says that, okay, this year we are not going to be hiring, which means that the entire uh, job market uh, and then the colleges from where engineers were graduating, everybody was thinking that, oh, uh, come, uh, you know, August of 2023, when we will all graduate, one lakh new jobs will exist. Now, probably those one lakh jobs will not exist. That will be lower. That might be 50,000. But the number of people who are going to be graduating out of engineering colleges, boot camps, uh, and, and the number of people who every year normally just uh, think of changing jobs because they probably have spent four or five years of their current job they want to change, that, that number is not going to go down, uh, the number of people who are looking for jobs. But the number of jobs have uh, reduced. Both of these factors uh, combined, what it really makes is that it changes the demand supply ratio. A couple of years back, or even one year back, um, there were a lot of software engineering roles out there in the market, but not enough people who could be hired for those roles. Now, the situation might look like, uh, and I'm going to talk about whether it really is or whether it looks like, but let's let's assume that from, from the perspective of the companies I'm talking about. Here, it might look like, okay, now uh, we don't have that many roles but the number of people looking for them increases. So which basically means that the competition to get into these roles does increase. So does that mean that, you know, it's all gloom and doom and you're not going to get a job in software engineering for the next few years? And that's actually not the case. And that's what I wanted to talk about. So I was recently looking at uh, the companies uh, which are actually still hiring, which have opened up new positions in the last few weeks, uh, in the last few days even. Um, and I was seeing that there were a lot of industries which move a little slowly in terms of hiring. So when they see that there is a need to hire, let's say 10 people to create those positions, to get those off, you know, job descriptions rolled out, to do the interviews and hire them, they might be moving a little slowly. And while they were doing a little slowly last year, it meant that a lot of startups and more faster moving companies picked up a lot of talent from the market. But these companies still had these roles open. And I'm talking about a little more older tech companies like uh, companies which are in, in the uh, you know space of uh, manufacturing engineering, let's say Honeywell, Bosch, Siemens, uh, General Electric, right? Or companies which are in the aviation space, Airbus, Boeing. These companies had a very bad time during COVID because nobody was flying. So airlines were canceling orders and nobody was buying planes. But now that market is going up, which means that more planes will be manufactured and these companies are going to be growing. There were companies like uh, Booking.com uh, or Airbnb, which laid off a lot of people because people stopped traveling during COVID. And now travel is picking up. A lot of people are going out because many people have not been traveling for the last two years. So they need to travel. And these companies are actually growing. So there are actually business verticals where there is actually a lot of growth. And these companies are actually hiring. Uh, most of these companies I just mentioned mentioned the names of, I was looking up and I saw that they all have hundreds of new openings which have opened up just in the last few months, which means that if you look at the market, there are sectors which are still growing. There will be sectors like, you know, banks, some of the largest banks across the world. They are not uh, so much affected in the sense that just because stock markets are down, the banks don't need to keep building the things that they were building. They still need to build that and they will still need to hire engineers for that. And that said, there are a lot of fields. If you just look around yourself, you will see that there are a lot of fields where things are still being done in a non-digital way, where information is still being exchanged by people talking to each other or by you know, writing it down uh, somewhere or maybe by Google Sheets or Excel Sheets somewhere. And those all industries will get digitized. And it has been happening over the last 20 years. It will keep on happening for the next 20 years because there is a lot of scope of digital transformation in the existing businesses that we see around us. So the jobs will be there and software engineers will still keep getting hired. What do you need to do though? And um, that's the interesting part. Because uh, like I said, uh, if you think that, okay, I will uh, go for this company, this job that I will go for. And here, this is a company which never fires its employees. This is a company which never lays off. And, you know, even if I don't work, this company will keep me employed. That's 
not something that happens in a uh, you know a world which is driven largely by capitalism where you are getting employed by private companies who have profits and who have losses and when they are going to be in losses they have to reduce their expenses so nobody is going to keep you employed just because uh, you were able to clear an interview a couple of years back just because of that reason they will keep you employed whether or not you are actually providing value so it boils down to and then if you look around yourself as well you talk to your friends you will see the ones who are least worried about layoffs or who are least concerned about job security are the ones who deep inside know that they can today if they are asked to leave their current job they can just go out look for jobs and they will get hired uh, immediately because the work that they do is valuable they are good in their skills and if they go to any company which is hiring for the roles that they can work on they would like to hire them and that's what you need to work on and and to do that obviously we will have to look back a lot into our fundamentals it's not about whether we know a certain programming language or a certain tech stack but it's more about do we know how softwares are designed do we know how the technology internally works do we know how uh, data is stored what is the appropriate you know uh, structure of storing the data in a database where to use an sql database where to use a no sql database understanding cap theorem understanding distributed computing if those fundamentals are very clear your skills are still going to be you know at the top 5% or top 1% 1% of skilled engineers and you would still be in very high demand and like i said while you would see some news of layoffs happening while you might see that okay some of these companies which you might have been thinking for the last 5 years 10 years as okay the dream company you want to go to but they are asking engineers to go that's not the case across the industry there are a lot of companies who are actually still hiring and even if you look at companies like let's say company like google where uh, it has been said and obviously while it's not official information people are saying that maybe over the next year 10000 engineers might be let go people are just spreading rumors around that but if you look at last few weeks google has been pretty actively hiring senior and staff engineers uh, even in india right now which means in all of these companies uh, even when you see the news of layoffs they still need good engineers and that's the key to you know recession proofing your tech career if that's the question that people a lot of people ask so hopefully this is helpful uh, hopefully there is some takeaway for you to go and learn and um, recession proofing your tech career do like and share this video if this was helpful and um, subscribe to our, our youtube channel if you want to keep uh, getting videos like this